This video is brought to you by the book, The Airplane Flying Handbook, the classic staple of flight training revised and updated for modern day flight training. It even includes chapter summary videos to help you fully understand each chapter. Visit m0a.com forward slash store to learn more and grab your copy. Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of m0a.com and welcome now into day nine of our 31 day to safer pilot challenge. Uh, in day nine, we are talking about power off stalls. And first off, I want to say awesome comments on the power on stall video. Again, the whole purpose of those comments is just to build up a great thread of additional ideas uh, that you guys can be implementing. And uh, since we all fly different aircraft, it's great to learn some of those different procedures that you guys are doing. What I want to share with you though today is in our power off stalls video, that is really my procedure I do in 512 Romeo. Those of you that aren't familiar, 512 Romeo is my Cessna 150 um, that I love so dearly and fly so much. So um, I'm going to run you through a power off stall in that Cessna 150. So of course the first things first is my area is clear and my pre-maneuver checks have done. I've done my clear and turns pre-maneuver checklist is done. Next thing the carburetor heat comes on and I bring the power back to around 1700. Notice that around is in bold because I find a lot of students get uh, just too picky when I say bring the power back to 1700 and they'll fixate on that. They'll be fighting it. They'll go to 16 then they'll go to 18. They're just trying to get that throttle perfect uh, with the anxiety of knowing they're going to be doing a stall. You don't need that. Bring it back to a ballpark around 1700. They're, again, we don't care how you get into the stall. I care about the recovery. You practice stalls to practice recoveries, not to practice how to get into the stalls. So power back to around 1700, and I'm just gonna dump my flaps in. Some people say, you know, work the flaps in increments, you know, initially off the bat. That's probably not a bad idea, but there's nothing wrong with just dumping the flaps in to landing configuration and getting them there. One thing you're gonna notice though when you do that is you're gonna have to nose this airplane down or you're gonna stall before you're actually ready for it. So as you're dumping those flaps in, be sure you're pushing that nose down. I like to also slow to 70 miles per hour. Uh, 70 miles per hour is what I like to be on a uh, when I'm turning final, you know, kind of crossing the tree line. Um, that's where I like to be about 70 miles per hour. Um, so again, do I care how you get in the stall? No, but if we're going to do it, we might as well make it as realistic as possible. So I like to choose a fictitious ground. For example, if I do this at 3,500 feet, obviously with dumping in my flaps, my power's back and I'm nosing down, I'm going to lose altitude. So if I'm at 3,500 feet and descending, I'm going to pretend that the ground is 3,300 feet just so we, uh, we can really judge how well we recovered. Did we, uh, you know, did you recover at 3,200 feet? Well, then you fictitiously just made a 100 foot hole in the ground. Um, so make that fictitious ground. It's something you can, uh, you know, judge yourself on and grade yourself on your recovery. Um, so make that fictitious ground. When you get about 50 to 25 feet above it, you're going to go power back to idle. And then we're going to do that dirty word that I hate, and that is flare. Crank that thing back like you think you are um, an astronaut coming in to land the, uh, I guess now the late space shuttle. You've just got that thing cranked back so much, you flare. And now that's the procedure for getting into it. Let's look at the most important part, and that is the recovery. So my recovery and these first two things happen almost instantaneously carb heat goes off power goes to full literally i mean the controls are so close i've got and again picture this i'm sitting in the right seat so it'd be a little bit different for you guys um but i'd be pushing that uh that carb heat in literally with my my pinky and my ring finger and that throttle be going full with my thumb and a little bit of my palm you know just pushing both those in almost simultaneously because it's got to happen quick carb heat off full power um nose slightly down or level but let me tell you something if you just did a full stall and did exactly what we said you've already got no problem getting that nose down because there's a pretty good chance you're looking down at the trees and the houses and whatever's uh you know three thousand four thousand feet down below you you're uh, you'll have no problem getting that nose down if you do a full stall so uh nose slightly down um or 
break that stall and just kind of baby it back up to level. Flaps to 20 degrees. This is the most important part of this. The last thing you want to do is take out all those flaps at once. If you take out all those flaps at once, you're going to sink like a rock. Those flaps are helping you generate lift. Flaps go to 20 degrees. Through 70 miles per hour, my flaps are going to 10 degrees. Once I've accelerated through 70 miles per hour, my flaps are going to 10 degrees. Once I establish a positive rate of climb, my flaps are what I call up and out. They're out of there. And then I'm gonna to return to cruise flight. Again, keep in mind, this is a recovery for my Cessna 150. What I'd love to read is, what's your recovery for a power off stall in your aircraft? You know, not everybody has a carburetor heat. Um, you know, what is your actual recovery? That's what I want to hear from you. It'd be great to get a running thread going of everybody flying all sorts of different aircraft, sharing their recoveries, what their instructors recommended, and some great uh, techniques there. So I can't wait to read your comments on that. Uh, make sure you're leaving those comments on saferpilotchallenge.com. Um, and most importantly, guys, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk with you more tomorrow. See ya.